Ron Berkowitz is with us in the studio, and he owns Burke Communications. Alex Rodriguez is his client, and tonight's the uh, finale in the Bronx for uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Ron, first of all, welcome to our show, man. How you doing? Thank you, man. It's great to, uh, great to be here. Ron is in the club of second babies as well. So he Ron did. is in the club of exha exhaustion and wondering why he decided to have a second child? Uh, yeah, <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> absolutely. But, you know, at least I, I, I saw you rocking uh, rocking Tegan in this studio. I was like, whoa, that is that is serious duty right there. You're right. That's, you should have brought your baby with you. <laughs> how old's your other one? You, so your first uh, child's how old? Almost two and a half. Okay, mine's 19 months and Kinsley's three weeks today. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's a lot going yeah, on there. Yeah. Yeah. You, guys, you guys have been busy. Yeah, of course. We've been yeah. busy. We, yeah, we have sex on the same exact schedule, basically. <laughs> Every time we have a child, you know, hopefully it's it's, 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 it's not, you know, we, it's with our wives. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, you never know. All right, so, Ron, let me ask you this. So you aligned with A-Rod three years ago, and all the terms I used to describe him, they all fit, and there's probably 15 more that I could rifle off. What was the first thing that you told him, and how receptive was he to your advice? You know, the first thing I, I don't I, – I really don't remember the first thing I said to him. You know, him and I – I've known him, actually, on and off for – uh, the better part of his career uh, when he was down in, uh, in Miami when he was 18 before he was drafted I was at the University of Miami and and you know we we touched base then just as as friends through mutual people and then kind of lost touch um, you know over the years when he was in Seattle and then when he got back to New York we got hooked up again I did some stuff with him charity wise and, mm -hmm. and things like that on the PR front uh, a couple years ago when, when you know he hired us he hired us you know full-time to come on board um, you know, it was before anything really went down, and 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 you know, it was more just how do we how do we build the image? How do we continue to grow what what we have what, here? I mean, was he ever was he aware of how people perceived him? Yes, uh, absolutely. Did I he mean, care? I, yeah, because uh, it felt like I, he didn't care. I, I listen. I think the one thing about Alex that 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 people don't know is he he watches and listens to everything and you know some people have reported that and talked about it but he he really is aware of what goes on and he's a he's a really you know he's a really emotional person as you saw last week but he he doesn't wear it on his sleeve like that so you would never know he'd walk down the street and you would not know that a couple years ago i think what you see now is if you walk down with him on the street you'll see that and he mm -hmm. loves to walk around new york city and he loves to talk to people and loves to say hello and sign autographs and take pictures and these are the things he didn't do four or five or six years ago that it, we thought it was important that you have to do like you mm -hmm. need to you need to be you. Like what I saw with kids and the way he talks to uh, younger players and teaches them, like all those things that, which, you're, that you're hearing about which now. Which is why his teammates love him, by the way. Right. I saw that. Except Jeter, of right. course. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get I to that. Did. But go ahead. I don't know if we will. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll ask. You can dodge, but I'm definitely uh, going to ask. But, you know, th those are the things that people never saw. You know, and yeah. you know, I, I would walk around and see him in Tampa and talking to kids and high-fiving kids, and I'd be like, I go, this is you. But, Ron, let me ask you this, because – I'm from here. I never, I never doubted. There are some guys that are bad guys. Mm -hmm. He's clearly not a bad guy at all. Very generous. Um, you know, I, I know what he's done for the little leagues, and he's a smart guy. Um, his street sense has been lacking over the years. I, I think in, in his ability to read the room. What, what I always took away was that he, it was like a phony presentation. Like, and and there's a difference between being aloof and being contrived. And Contrived to me comes with it feels much more negative, and he felt packaged. He felt rehearsed. He felt like he was going from a script. Why he didn't need to do that? You know, I I, I can't I can't tell you why. From you know eighteen to you know thirty eight, um, I think just you know this was a guy who was kind of labeled the one at at eighteen years old. Like he he was always that guy, and you know what people forget is he ended up in Seattle, right? He was. He wasn't 21. There was a veteran team of Buner and Martinez and Griffey. Yep. And here he was, you know, back in the day, sitting in the hotel room by himself and, you know, not out with those guys because he was the 19-year-old or the 20-year-old. And he never had that life. He didn't, you know, he didn't have the luxury of, of going to college and, 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 you know, bonding with people like that. It just wasn't there. So I think, you know, the way you're packaged as a, as a you know, high school all-star or – the great one, the next one, the number one pick. Mm -hmm. You see that time and time again. I mean, it, it happens all across different sports. Oh, Bryce Harper's know? had some battles with that. Yeah, I mean, it's, listen, look to your at point. Yeah, look, and look at look at a guy like Johnny Menzel, right? Mm -hmm. The perfect example. Um, Johnny, you know, was just anointed that guy. He wins the Heisman. He's anointed that guy. And now today, there's so many problems. Now, now his issue is a little bit different because 
he lives it on Twitter and Instagram, yeah. and that would be like the number one thing. Andy, Do not. Andy has know. Andy has an alcohol problem. Right. No, there's a lot. Of, there's and a drugs. lot of issues there. Yeah. and and abuse and all uh, domestic abuse or whatever mm -hmm. it is. But but he he puts that out there in that sense, right? So it's a it's a it's a little bit different. But but he was anointed that guy. Like so, when you get in that spotlight, as you, you know, Tiki, as you know, certainly. It's you know you gotta you gotta you gotta really stumble balance. you gotta yeah. stumble. So I think he was packaged like that in the beginning. I think what I saw in the last you know three years mm -hmm. is a guy that started to open up a little bit, take his guard down a little bit. You know, I know you guys had uh, Mark Feinstein from the Daily News in here the other day, mm -hmm. and you know a guy like him. They let's say they didn't have a great relationship three or four years ago, and their relationship now is much better. But some people will say that the reason that this has happened is because A Rod is smart enough to know that he needs these people to help salvage his legacy or his image so that, and I don't even know if I believe this, maybe partly I do, to be fair, because I think he's shrewd enough to try to manipulate people. Um, but to do it now is almost a Hail Mary desperate toss to get people in your corner. What would you say to that? Uh, I, listen, I think, I, I think that there are, you know, 50% of the people love Alex and 50% of the people hate Alex, and I think it's always going to be like that, and I think it's o always been like that. So I, I don't think he is is calculating that. I think he 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 you know we decided there's a there's an image uh, of him and and how do we get that out there and that and that way to get that out there was just be yourself. That was the first thing and I really I really believe that and you know I'm, I obviously I work for the guy and it's my job to to sell that to you guys and to everybody that's listening. But the truth is when you sit down with him and you talk with him, that's that's what that's what I really believe and that's why I think the Fox. Uh, World Series broadcast was so important, them. right? Because I agree. Because inside, you know, inside the locker, in the clubhouse, and the and the and with the media, they know how he is. They could talk X's and O's, but you know, outside, you know, in Iowa and Idaho and wherever, they don't they don't know the guy like that. Mm -hmm. And that's where I thought it was very important for those people to see him. And, and look what and look what happened. Yeah. Now you know now people would love him to be back. It home. was a good look for him. I think it definitely it definitely helped him, no doubt. Ron Berkowitz with us here in studio. Alex Rodriguez is publicist. Final game tonight in the Bronx, and he's in studio here on Tiki and Tierney. Speaking of this final game in the Bronx, were you guys blindsided by this Yankees move? Uh, yeah, I think it was unexpected. Yeah, I mean, I, I think when you know when Alex gave me a call. Last, uh, I believe it was last Wednesday, he said, you know, there's some stuff brewing. And then Friday, it was like, this is what we're doing. I, you know, we, I don't think it was what we, what we expected. And, and I think he's, you know, he, he got what he wanted. And it was to play tonight um, in front of the fans. What, and bring was, everyone his, back. what was his initial reaction? Because it couldn't have been, okay, I accept this. <laughs> he had to be but, pissed. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't there for the initial reaction. You, you know but I mean, it's not, it's not, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think he was thrilled with it. I mean, he he it wouldn't be the way he scripted it to go down, but you know, you know with with him it's it's very rarely scripted <laughs> to it that way. So, you know, we we adapt and we and we move on and I think, you know, it would have been great if he got, you know, some more swings in this week, but you know, tonight hopefully will be a nice celebration for him. His, you know, it was important to get his mom and his kids up here to see the last game and you know, it it happened so quick. It's not, you know, I can't speak on retirement. You know, you you've been there, so he, he didn't have really have time to think about it. Right, yeah. it's mm -hmm. just there. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna hit home tomorrow and Sunday and Monday. You know, really, really hard for him because this is what he's done every day since he was fourteen years. Well, old. I've always said this, Ron. You know, whether you love a Rod or hate him, uh, nobody. And I, and I said this Tiki, I guess two days ago, where I think most fans think that everybody who's in the pros loves their job. And some people are just there because they're good enough to coast. Alex is a player who loves the game, knows the history. Uh, he's enamored with the game of baseball. And and I, I, listen, I believe this, that we're at a point now, whether it's, and not just Alex, but, uh, you know, all-encompassing athletes, whether it's strippers or extramarital affairs or light drugs like marijuana, people don't care anymore. But I think what really hurt him to start was his relationship with Derek Jeter. I really do. And I know he was asked a question about that because it forced the fans to almost take a side. So it caused a little division unnecessarily. And I don't think I don't think Derek did him any favors. I've always said that about Derek, and I've actually defended Alex in that regard. Not that it matters for tonight or moving forward, but I am curious. Do they talk or are they even remotely close? What's their I mean they're uh, are they friends? they talk. I mean I don't I don't I don't know they don't hang out per se, but they, they he talk. He didn't go to his know. wedding, right? Didn't go to Derek's wedding? No, no, but it was also you know, during seasons. So. That's true. Too. <laughs> so but he wasn't so playing, so he so. probably could have gone. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like last year, last year we were at the SBs. Uh, Derek was there, and they, you know, they they 
sat together for quite a while and, and spoke and hung out, you know, at the after party. And it was, you know, it's it's one of those things. And everyone in the room, you know, it didn't matter who was there. And there were a lot of people there. And everyone in the room was like, okay, where, you know, <laughs> what's going the on right that's there? What, right. I mean, it's, the it's always been that thing. You know, but what people forget about Alex and Derek, which is really, you know, I always say it's like the forgotten story with him. And, you know, again, going back to what you said about everyone, you love him or hate him or he's selfish or he's this or he's that. The guy came to New York and he moved to third base. He was the best shortstop in the game by far, by far, right? Mm -hmm. I, listen, I was better, no uh, more, better than Derek. I agree. I agree. And I agree. And he moved over, you know, switch positions for 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 the better of the team and for and for and for Derek. And mm -hmm. you know, it's one of those like selfless acts that you think like, wow, it kind of just goes untold a little bit. But and then the guy became a uh, you know a Gold Glove third baseman. It's 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 pretty amazing. So. You know, I think w when it comes to those two, it's always, they're always going to be intertwined with everything that they do. But it's it's you know it's it, it sometimes I think it's blown up a little more too in, in the media. Yeah, in real sense. quick one here, uh, Ron. Do you think the Yankees did him favors by the way that they handled this because it puts him in a sympathetic light? Um, yeah, listen, I think since since he's come back, really, he's he's been looked at in a, in a in a sympathetic way, and 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 I think it's. I, I think it's a combination of things that have happened. I, 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 do I think it works out like that? Yeah, but I do. I think it's the way he wanted it to work out. No, he'd rather, he'd much rather, you know, play and like just keep going in that sense. But uh, you know, I think it's it's worked it's worked its way in that direction. Well, you also know if he would have came back a year ago and hit a buck seventy nine, basically whatever he's done this year, if he would have done that last year, then I think that sympathetic embrace or re embrace would not have been as strong. When you start mashing, you know fans become fans again, well, and that certainly helps the healing process. Absolutely. When, you know? we, when we were when we were you know talking about our plan and how do we move forward, you know the first thing I always said to him was, and I w would watch him work out, and he was you know he's the he is the workout king. I've never, I mean you know Tiki done does some pretty good workouts, and I this guy is just so intense. But when he was working out and and down in Miami, and I and I watched the workouts in January and February before this before he went to camp, you know he was he had that that look in his eye like he he was going to be able to mash and you know I said to him I go it all starts here like if you go out and you bat a buck 70 mm -hmm. it's not it's going to be really hard for whatever Nothing we do whatever say. whatever I can do and help build it's going to be tough no one's going to listen right, to you because nobody cares but at that he, point. and he came out and did you know and hit 33 home runs and it didn't matter you know what the batting average was that's this is the game of, of home runs right and then people and people loved it and that certainly did you know help put it on the right track do you think he's done or you think he wants to play, and or do you think he will play? Yeah, two again? different questions. Does he want to play? Uh, honestly, I, I I I'm sure he does want to play. Um, I I I think that, I think the the right move is 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 doing what he's doing. Go home. You know, take some time, think about it. Um, you know, I'm sure somebody somebody will call him. There's the, you know we've heard we've heard rumblings of different things, but you know I think he's I think he's got so much to offer. Uh, you know, he could be back doing doing games. He's got a tremendous business career. He's given 35 scholarships uh, down in Miami to FIU and the University of Miami since 2004 when he was 29 years old, which people don't know. We don't really put that out there. You know, that's the, the type of things he, he likes to do. And I think he's going to thrive in this role in teaching those kids. You saw the Sterling Castro quote the other day where yep. Castro said, you know, if he doesn't tell me to swing at that first pitch curveball, I take I take the pitch instead of knocking in the double and two RBIs. Yeah. That is what he, he – it is his calling. I mean, he really can Could do Could he that. be a manager? I think he definitely can. Do I that. do, too. Yep, I think he can. I'm with you. Wish we had a little more time. Um, Ron Berkowitz, good stuff. Publicist for A-Rod. You'll be busy tonight, and you'll be busy in a week with the Marlins and the Rays and the Red Sox, maybe, and the <laughs> Tigers, and everybody else starts calling because we both know they're going to call, and I think we both know he's coming back to hit 700. Good meeting you, man. You, too. Good I work, there, I Ron. appreciate it. Thank you, guys.